lately. Uh-huh. Uh, they seem to be okay. Uh, what we'll do is we'll talk a little bit about them as we go. But let's still walk around and do a quick rigging check. And Sounds see good. What the airplane looks like. Okay. Hmm. Sweet. Open the door here. What I want to do is center up the wheel in the cockpit. Okay. So that's pretty well centered right there. I can do it from right here. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty well centered right there. What I want to do is sight down the trailing edge of the flaps right here and see if they're even with the bottom of the fuselage. Mm -hmm. And they are. This aileron lines up with the with the flap. It should let, if it lines up with the wingtip, that's okay. If it doesn't, that's okay too. Mm -hmm. Wheel center in the cockpit. We're lined up here. Let's go look at the other side. <laughs> Flaps lined up with the bottom of the fuselage. The trim tab is lined up with the aileron right here, but you notice the trim tab is offset. I, I do notice so that. So this aileron is a little bit off. Okay. It's somebody probably lined it up here instead of lining it up, up here. Okay. So it looks like to me I would put down left aileron rigging appears to be out slightly. Okay. Right left down. Aileron. Left aileron rigging appears to be out slightly. I checked all those already. Cool. Let's look at the tail back here and see what it looks like for rigging. If I line it, if I take the tip of the leading edge over there and I put see it, it just where I can see the top, uh -huh. that's where this one is. Just about the same. See it? Yep. Okay. I find them out by this much frequently. Wow. Where people just put new rod ends on and uh -huh. they don't check anything and they just put it back together. Wow. This doesn't look too bad. Rudder looks pretty good as far as when you they push it back in, it pretty well lined up at the top and the bottom looks doesn't look too bad. Mm -hmm. Alright, if you'll put the flaps down for them. Let me check the flap bumper real quick. All right, there's a rubber bumper located mm -hmm. right up in here. Mm -hmm. What we want to do is push forward and feel it spring back at us a little bit, and that one's doing real good. Let's see what the other side does. Okay. That one's okay. That looks... It might be a little tight. We'll, we'll be able to tell when we get it down. If you just push forward right here at the outboard, I, I see. can't hardly I get it. any movement uh -huh. at all. Uh -huh. We'll look at it when we get it down. Okay. All right, if you'll put the flaps down for me, we're going to start right around the right front at the door. Okay. All the way down? Well, I spent 34 years with Delta before I retired. Really? I was manager of line maintenance in Atlanta, and I retired from Delta back in 05. And I've been doing, I've had a Beechcraft shop for 25 years, and then I retired. And ABS wanted me to come on board with them back in 05, and went on board with them. And I'm a lead technical advisor to them also. It's a great idea. Great I like idea. it. Let's go around the front and check the door. Okay. How much do you do yourself? Almost nothing. Okay. As far as lubrication or anything? You, yeah, uh, almost nothing. Okay. Well, I, would you like to? I would like okay, to, good. yes. All right, well, let's talk about lubrication then. Okay. We recommend three products. Are you familiar mm -hmm. with LPS? Yes. Okay. We recommend one, LPS 1, LPS 2, and LPS 3. Okay. LPS 3 is a corrosion preventative material. Mm -hmm. And what we'd like to see you do is about once a year, Spray it with take the cover off the wing bolts, uh -huh. spray the wing bolts, wipe it all around the inside, okay. and it will create a waxy coating in there. Mm -hmm. And if we stop moisture or air, we stop corrosion. Don't That's we? LPS3. LPS3. That okay. is corrosion preventative material. You don't have a lot of problems out here with corrosion mm -hmm. like we do on the East Coast. We mm -hmm. fight it continuously. Mm -hmm. I have, out of all the airplanes, I've looked at 17 airplanes in the last two and a half days mm -hmm. and I haven't seen any serious corrosion yet yeah and back there I could have looked at two or three and had a lot of problems and we see wow. that a lot more in the East Coast 
once a year is plenty to do those with. Mm -hmm. okay? LPS2 is a general purpose lubricant. Mm -hmm. It can be used on the airplane anywhere you want to use it, on any flight control, any hinge, doors, locks, handles, keys, elevators, rudders, whatever you want to put it on. You can't hurt it and I like to see you do it once a month. Okay. If you'll just around the the airplane. Three, you're talking about the LP3. Two. LP3 is once a year and that's corrosion okay, preventative it. only. Mm -hmm. LPS2, once a month, it's great. Okay. It's cheaper to wipe off a little oil on the flight control than it is replace parts. Right. Okay. okay. LPS1, we'll talk about when we get there. Okay. The doors on beach airplanes are a problem. Uh -huh. It's an engineering uh -huh. problem. Yeah. They've always had a problem and they always will. There's an mm -hmm. aluminum box that goes right here that surrounds the door hinge uh -huh. on the top and the bottom. And what happens is they run a steel pin through the aluminum box, mm -hmm. up through the hinge, which is brass, uh -huh. and out the top of the aluminum box. Well, nobody ever lubricates it. It gets so neglected at annuals. So the steel pin uh -huh. freezes in the brass. Oh. Uh -huh. It starts rotating in the aluminum box. And what happens is it elongates the hole and you can pick the door up and down. Yours is in pretty good shape still. Uh huh. So what I suggest you do is keep LPS2, spraying some LPS2 in there. Spray it at the top of the hinge, move okay. the door a little bit, and let the, let it try to run down around the pin. Okay. This is okay. Good. Um, they can be repaired, but it's expensive and difficult to repair. Okay. But yours seems to be all right, and uh, if you can keep it lube, you will do. It lube, it'll, it'll help you a lot. Okay. All right. All right. Let's move on out the wing here. Fuel caps require placards that state the type of fuel, which is 100 low lead, uh -huh. and the quantity of fuel, which yours is correct. Okay. okay. You've got these strange caps on here because you've got the pressurized air, you know, you right. the high altitude airplane. These are Viaton seals. Uh -huh. We recommend replacing regular seals every annual. These you can go about two or three years with. They'll okay. They'll pull up a lot better. But just keep an eye on them. If you start to see any cracking in the seal, it's time to replace it. Okay. Aileron screws on the Beechcraft airplane are special screws because they're uh -huh. structural. If you'll take a look right here, let me find another screw here. It's, I, these are all flathead, but a, a regular screw is more of a flathead than uh -huh. this type of a head. Uh -huh. These are structural screws. There's four out the outboard end, two on the top, two on the bottom, and four on the inboard end. Mm -hmm. If you ever replace them, make sure you put the proper screws back in. Okay. And second of all, there was a service letter that came out about two weeks ago about aileron attachment. Uh -huh. I don't know if you read it. No, I didn't. All right. What it happens is this aileron can be installed and the screws will tighten up and it won't be on the bracket. Oh. Uh huh. You can you can so you actually move it. Uh -huh. It will slide right off. <laughs> and I've seen airplanes come uh -huh. to clinics with uh -huh. the aileron not attached. <laughs> and it's very dangerous. Uh -huh. So if your shop ever removes the aileron for any reason, uh huh. Or anybody removes the aileron for any reason. Pull on I it. I want you to go out and do the check we uh -huh. did at uh -huh. the very beginning with the flaps up, mm -hmm. center the wheel, and if everything doesn't line up, you mm -hmm. know the aileron's not attached right. Okay. Because we know now that it all lines up, don't we? Right. Okay. Up there in the front of the aileron, it's kind of hard to see. You can see the wire right there, the I yellow. See it. Yes. Okay. Uh huh. That's a balance weight. Uh -huh. See it up in yep, there? I do. Okay. It, there's a piece of metal that runs from mm -hmm. this hinge all the way to this hinge with a lead bar about as big as my thumb in it. Mm -hmm. The reason for it is because we have the pivot point here the, and we have uh -huh. a long arm here. We have to counterbalance uh -huh. that. Uh -huh. They have a tendency to work loose every so often because they're riveted in. Mm -hmm. Well, once a year, push the aileron all the way down and right along the rivets, mm -hmm. which is as far as just tap it. That one sounds funny. Mm -hmm. If it's loose, it'll buzz. Uh -huh. It'll make a buzzing noise. Uh -huh. Very obvious. Okay, down here on the flaps, we talked about the flap bumpers. You can see your flat bumper right there. I see it, yes. Okay. And you can see right here where it's been touching the flap. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. That one looks pretty good. Out here on the flaps, we have an outboard flap track mm -hmm. and an inboard flap track. Each track has an aft roller and a front roller. Mm -hmm. These rollers must be installed in the proper orientation to keep the flaps from migrating outboard uh -huh. or inboard. Excuse me. Um, we see them coming out of paint shops or maintenance shops that the flaps have been removed and they're in all kinds of configurations. How would we tell? All right, well, I'm going to show you. If you'll notice this roller, how it's larger on the inside of the track than the outside of the I track. Can you uh -huh. see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. I do. Let's look at the front one. What does it look like? It's larger again on the inside. Okay. 
easy way to remember this is think of a train. Mm -hmm. so this the, is the, the train large track. wheel is on the inside of the track, Very huh? Very good. Okay. This is the train track and this is the train. Big wheel on the inside. Okay. So where do we want them down here? On we the inside on of that side. track. So we want them on the inside of this of, track. Uh -huh. the smaller portion. Smaller portion on the outside of the flap. Yeah, you want the big wheels on the inside of the track, just uh, like a yeah. train. Yeah. Inside. Yes, sir. All right, you have a bonding jumper right here. Got it. You have another bonding jumper right here. Make Got sure it. these remain intact. Uh huh. Those are for electrical discharge if you get hit by lightning or have a static discharge. Mm -hmm. This is your flap actuator. It is supposed to move because mm -hmm. the flap does move in and out on mm -hmm. retraction and extension. LPS2, LPS2, LPS2 on all the rollers. Okay. All the aileron hinges, the flaps, everything. If it moves, mm -hmm. spray it. Okay. Your cargo door hinge or your cabin door hinge here. This one's starting to get a little wear in it. I'm getting a little bit of wear right here at uh -huh. the top. Not bad. Inside of it, spray it on the inside. Okay. Move the door in and out. Make it work down that work hinge. Work into it. Okay. Work into that hinge. You can spray all of this here. You can spray the lock here. You can spray up in here. You can spray out here. Okay. You cannot hurt it. Okay. Back door feels good, no problem there at all. Everything looks good. Pins look good. Pins look good, okay. Take a look at the step. I don't see any cracks or any corrosion. This is a real common spot from under the step for corrosion to emanate uh -huh, uh -huh. from under the step and start to show up right here as bubbles in the paint. Mm -hmm. Looks like somebody's done some kind of repair work right in here at one time or another. But there, there's no cracks and I don't see any corrosion. Look good. Check your elevator hinge bearings here. All right, we're starting to get a little bit of play here. Can you hear this? Yes, I we're hear it. We're starting to get a little bit of play in that bearing mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. there. It's mm -hmm. very minor, but it's, it's beginning. Let me check the rest of them. That one seems that to be one's okay. Tight. Uh -huh. That one's tight. Let's see how the thrust bearing is. Thrust bearing looks to be okay, too. Um, Minor wear and right right elevator outboard hinge bearing. Okay. okay. All right, if you'll notice right up in here, you can see where it's painted black. I see that. On the back of the spar, yeah. if you'll notice on this side, it's painted blue. I see that. Uh -huh. Okay. If you take this plate off right here, mm -hmm. you'll see the actuator for the trim tab will be painted blue, blue on this side and black on the other side. This is an AD note that came out uh -huh. that if you ever have the airplane painted, go back in and make sure they re-identified it again because uh -huh. one actuator turns clockwise and one actuator uh -huh. turns counterclockwise uh -huh. and they got installed backwards. So the trim ran backwards. It worked just fine, but it ran backwards. Mm -hmm. And it ruined the guy's day. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet. So that's why this AD came out. Okay. There was also another AD out on the rudder. Uh -huh. I'm not sure if it applies to this airplane. Let me look at my paper. This is a 91. Writing because this is what I push Keep up. Uh huh. We get the original. 504? It goes through EA 500, so you made it. Okay, good. Good deal. Alright, when you're doing your lubrication procedures, make sure you get the outboard bearing. Bearing. And on the other end of this rod, right here, there's a bolt uh -huh, I haven't that seen attaches that. The, the aft rod to the center one. Uh -huh. Yours is getting worn a little bit up in there. This trim tab's got a lot of play in it. Let's see where it is here. Some of it's here, some, some of, of it's there. here. Uh -huh. My suggestion would be replace this bolt with a close tolerance bolt. Uh huh. 
an AN 173 5, and that will take a lot of this play out of there. Okay. Okay. What's the, what's the number? AN 173 5. AN 173 5. Close tolerance Thank you. pull. Yes, okay. sir. And that'll take a little bit of the wear out. There is also a bushing in there can be replaced. Mm -hmm. If the if you get the bolt out and you find the bushing bad, you may have to just replace the bushing too. Okay. okay. Lubricate, 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 lubricate all along the hinge, mm -hmm. and the tail cone has the cutouts on it right there yeah. that go right around this. Mm -hmm. You can use the little straw on the LPS can to spray that bearing right there without the, with uh -huh. the tail cone installed. Uh -huh. The only one you can't get to is the lower one. Okay. Don't forget your rudder hinges. Uh-huh, LPS2, uh-huh. No play there. It's got the same, same thing. The same exact thing as the uh -huh. other side. Okay. Bearings all feel great. Just the outboard one has a little bit in it. Uh-huh. Nothing to be concerned about right now. Mm -hmm. What does the angle do? Uh, September. Okay. Just check it again in September. Mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't even worry about it. Just watch it now that you uh -huh. know it's there. Okay. Uh, and when it gets about double that, I have. A, I have a thing that I tell people: if I can hear it but I can't see it, mm -hmm. leave it alone. Uh -huh. And I can't see that one move yet, but I can hear it bump. Right. So it's very, very minor. Okay. Okay. Tail looks straight. right flap is considered the slave flap and the left flap is considered the master flap. Uh huh. What and does that mean? The reason for that is, is because the switches that are controlled by the cockpit that start and stop the flaps are located uh, under on the that side. Only. Okay. 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 Any adjustments to the flap have to be made to the left flap first and then match the M right matched flap. Matched on the right. It. Okay. Okay. Uh huh. Because all the electrical stops are on this side. Okay. I'm going to get up underneath you guys and look right through here. Okay. These are your flap limit switches right here. Okay. This is the up limit switch. The far right one over here, I don't know if you can see it, is the down limit switch. Mm -hmm. And these two here are the approach switches. Mm -hmm. okay. Each switch has a little tiny roller on the end that I'm pointing at. See mm -hmm. it right there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those rollers have to be free. I'm gonna see if they're all free. They're all moving. Grab That's the only place. Flashlight from in my red bag. It's in the very front pocket. That's the only place we're going to use LPS-1 on the whole airplane. LPS-1. Now what's... LPS-1 is like sewing machine oil. Okay. If we put it, because of the conditions that those switches are under with mm -hmm. the dirt and the dust, if you use two, it's gummy and it attracts the dirt and it'll gum the rollers up and they won't move. Oh, okay. And those rollers need to ride up and down the ramps as the flaps move. Okay. Okay? How do you compare LPS-2 and 1? 2 and... Three? three is corrosion Cor prevented three. only. One and two to like tri-flow or? A tri-flow will work too. Tri-flow. You know, Which one is the tri-flow equivalent to? Uh, LPS two. Two, okay. Yeah. LPS one is very, very fine lubricant and it uh -huh. works great for the rollers. Okay. They seem to have least problems. If we use two on there, they get gummy and they gummy. get sticky. Okay. All right, let's check the flap rollers here. Make sure That's we're okay. Right. Let's back up one. Mm -hmm. How many approach positions do you have in the cockpit for your flaps? Two. Three. You have up, up approach, approach and, and down. down. But we have four switches. One for up, uh -huh. one for down, two for approach. Ah. Any idea why? This is in the POH. No, I don't know why. Okay, when you go from the full up position to uh -huh. approach, what are you setting up to do? 
Land, right? Land, uh-huh. Okay, you're trying to slow down. Okay. Okay, the flaps go to 14 degrees. Mm-hmm. If you go from this position to approach, what are you going to usually do? Go around, aren't you? Mm-hmm. The flaps go to 11 degrees. Oh, okay. This is something, if the switches are rigged correctly, that's the mm-hmm. way it's supposed to work. Mm-hmm. Okay, 14 going down, mm-hmm. and 11 going up. Give you a little more drag because mm-hmm. you want to slow down. Give mm-hmm. you a little more lift because you, you want to do That makes good around. sense. Uh-huh. Okay. Let's check the rollers and make sure they are installed correctly. That one is. That one is. The bonding jumper is intact. Actuator is free. Mm-hmm. This roller looks good. That roller looks good. We're intact there. And this flat bumper, I suspect it is too far out. Look oh, at it. it. It's, it's smashed. Damaged. Yeah. It needs to be replaced. Okay. Okay. Left flat bumper needs replaced. And I suspected that from how tight from it how was. From how tight it was? Right. Uh-huh. Okay. And is that because the adjustment for it was too far out to begin with? Okay. Exactly. Let me get a pointer and I'm rubber stuff. Yep. Uh huh. Yeah, I see it. And it's okay. has it dented the flap too? A little bit. Mm hmm. A little bit. Yeah. Okay. All right. Aileron trim tabs are Beach's engineering marvel. Uh huh. It takes one, two, three, four, five pivot points to move that one little tab. Uh-huh. Plus a chain and a, ca- and, a, and, a, and a cable going all the way to the cockpit. Wow. There's no bearings, mm-hmm. there's no bushings, there's nothing in any of those pivot points but a bolt. And huh. they wear f- rapidly. This one here is in pretty good shape. It's pretty tight and the mm-hmm. parts are expensive. Uh-huh. If you don't lube anything else on the airplane, lube spray <laughs> those five okay. points. Okay. That's good to know. All the way to the mm-hmm. bottom, the middle, the top, here, and here. Oh, I didn't see the bottom one too. That's yeah. where the rod pivots on. Yeah. See, it pushes from yeah. here. Pushes. That's there. the pivot point, and then it pushes it this yeah. way. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay, I see that. Make sure you keep them looped. Okay. Let's check the balance weights on the yellow run. Put a little tension up on that for me, if you would, just like that. All right, let it go. Hear that noise? Yeah. That's exactly what a balance weight will sound like mm-hmm. if it's loose. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's not bad. That's pretty normal. When they okay. get about double that is when you gotta start looking at them. But if you keep it lubed, that'll last you a long time. Okay, great. Okay, great. All right, we talked about fuel caps already. Uh huh. Okay, what's this tube for? Drainage from inside that And what are you draining? Compartment. Well, it shouldn't be draining, but it might drip. Okay, when you open this door, what do you do under there? Draining the fuel from the um, gas collator. Yeah. And what is that on the bottom of? Bottom of the fuel, fuel system? Valve. Oh, fuel selector valve, okay. This is the bottom of the fuel selector valve right here. Ah. So and that drain valve that you drain uh-huh. is the bottom of your fuel selector. So okay. any fuel that comes out of this drain tube right here indicates you either have a bad drain valve mm-hmm. or the fuel selector valve is leaking. Okay. That's why this door has this cavity in it mm-hmm. to catch that fuel and give so that you, you an will indicator know. that uh-huh. something's uh-huh. going on. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. All right, let's take a look at the motor. Do you yes. have your mags, alternator, and air pump on a 500 hour program? Yes. Okay. Every 500 hours, it, air yeah. pump's replaced. Yes. Alternator's overhauled, and mags are sent out for inspection. Right, good. actually replaced. You just replace the mags? Okay, yeah. good. Well, as long as they get the inspection yeah. done, if they determine it, it's mm-hmm. a lot of times it's cheaper. To, what kind are they? Oh, they're slicks. slicks. After yeah. they go through the first 500 hour, throw them away and buy new ones. It's cheaper. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's cheaper. That's why. That's Medics, what... you can make it through, but uh-huh. if they're slicks, you got problems. Uh huh. When you operate, uh, how do you operate with your BNC electric standby alternator? Do you operate with the switch on all the time? Off or? all the time. Okay. And the reason, why do you operate that way? I was told to operate that way. If you operate with your main alternator, will you start with your main alternator off or main alternator on? Main alternator off and then turn it on okay. after. 
if you start. will start, if you will leave your BNC system alternator on all the time, mm -hmm. when you start the engine, the BNC will come online. Mm -hmm. It will turn the yellow light on, okay. saying it's operating. Uh -huh. Then and when you then turn you'll have the a main warning. alternator uh -huh. on, uh -huh. it turns the yellow light off. It proved to you that the BNC system is operating, mm -hmm. and it proved to you the switching system is working. Okay. So and you leave the switch on all the time. It will be a faultless. Leave the BNC on all the all time. All the time. Okay. It's not operating. It's okay. still turning, but it's not doing anything because the switching box and the current sensor is telling you the main alternator's online. Okay. And if the alternator fails, the main alternator, the BNC takes Just over comes without on you having automatic. to do anything. Okay. Turns the yellow light on and you're good to go. And you've proved it works because you saw the light come on when you started the engine. That's something we're trying to promote and it, it, it's safer that way. I like the idea. Okay. Okay. This is your oil temp right here, so the can uh -huh. plug is loose. Mm -hmm. oh, it's I see. it's uh -huh. very difficult to get to, but it's going to get worse and it's going to come off. Is you, are you having any oil temp indication problems? No. No erratic movement on no. the needle? It's going to get worse. Gonna... You might want to get home, get it tightened up. Okay. Did you get that? Oh. Okay. Okay, he's on the phone. All right, if you'll look at your EGT probes right here. These are mm -hmm. your EGT probes. Mm -hmm. If you'll notice, there's a shoulder. Let me try to point it out here. There's a shoulder on the inside part. See where my screwdriver is? Yes, yeah, I see and there's it. There's a shoulder on the outside part. I see them both. They should be touching each other. Oh. Look at the okay. gap in this one. Long gap. Uh -huh. Okay, now let's look at this one. Now that one's touching that like one's it should close. be. Close. Uh huh. The reason we do that is so you have the same immersion depth of each probe to give you a more accurate EGT reading. Okay. Okay. That's simple. You just take the clamp loose and push it in where it's supposed to. Be. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, he's filming it too. Okay. Did you get the oil temp? Oil temp, um, temp probe. Yeah. Is can loose. plug's loose. The probe's not loose, but the cannon plug is. is, is the it? oil temp cannon plug is loose. And uh, the EGT Pro on number four is... Number two and number four, yes. Number two and number four. EGT Pro is slid out, yeah, and it, it should be, be slid back in. All the way in, yes. Okay. A lot of trash in here. See the trash? Yeah. Each of these compartments Eat drains this. to the compartment behind it. Uh -huh. If you Probably. get fuel in this compartment, it can't get out. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And it causes more problems. So this should be clean cleaned out. out. It okay. should, you should be able to pour something in there and it should run right on out the back. Okay. Okay. out too. Mag time is out. The impulse is clicking at yeah. different times. Yep. They're, they're not synced together. Good. That's about top dead center right there. So I think the prop's on backwards. Yeah. <laughs> How the hell did we come down here? <laughs> backwards. <laughs> well, it's, it's not on backwards. It's on 180, it's 180 degrees, degrees out. out. When your prop stops, does it normally stop like this? It does. Okay, it's on 180 degrees out. Okay. It should stop with the V down, just like that one does. And the reason for this is there's counterweights on the crankshaft. Uh huh. And this is the number one blade right uh -huh. here. We want the number one blade lined up with the top center mark on the okay. engine 
So the blade is opposite of the counterweights. Oh. The way uh -huh. it is now, it's on the same side and it will cause excessive wear to the counterweights and it also cause vibration in the engine. Okay. Has it, is it balanced? Um, that I don't know. I'm new to the plane. Okay, I'm looking for weights. I don't see any on this side. I don't remember. There's no indication in the logs of it being balanced. I don't think it's been balanced. Well, what I would suggest is, how many hours are on the engine? Um, 900. Okay, that's not too bad. I would probably turn the prop around mm -hmm. and put it on the other way mm -hmm. and then have it dynamically balanced. Okay. And I think you'll notice a difference a in the way difference. it runs. Okay. What kind of oil do you use in the engine? Um, Phillips, Aeroshell? I believe it's Aeroshell. Aeroshell? 100. And 100. How often, is, yeah. how often do you do it? Uh, oil change? 50 hours. Okay. Alright. Good. You got a crack in your slope baffle right here if you want to see it. You got to come on this side. See the, see the black lines up there? I see them, yes. That's a crack. I see them, yes. You can't do anything about it till the engine's removed. Uh huh. But and then get the, the barrel Shannon uh, baffles, right? Well, no, that's, that's not part of that. That's oh, it's not? Oh, okay. That has to have a repair done to it. If you look at my book on the table over there, uh -huh. it shows some pictures of it. Oh, okay. Um, but that has to be repaired with the engine out. Okay. That's part of the airframe. Okay. Okay, we talked about all Slump baffle. Slope. Slope. Slope baffle. Yes, oh, okay. Sir. We talked about alternator 500 hour inspections. You said you're doing that. Just yep. keep doing it. Baffles don't look too bad here. Let me look at this other side. You got a big... I would silicone that back down. Uh -huh. um, that's your timing plug right there, so you need to leave it open. But if you can silicone that back down to keep it down like that, it'll keep this number six cylinder a little, a little cooler. cooler. Okay. You've got some holes over here. This is pretty typical. Uh huh. Um, I would try to get this baffle on the other side of the alternator. Next time the alternator comes off, get this baffle to go on the other side of the plant and I silicone it. it together. Okay. So when the alternator needs to come off every annual and be inspected, the uh -huh. drive needs to be mm -hmm. inspected mm -hmm. and everything. But you've got a big hole right there. See where it's letting air in? Yes. That's a big hole. Huge that all hole. needs to be stretched, you know, taken care of. Okay. All right. The air comes in the front, mm -hmm. goes across the top, out the bottom. Right, okay. right. Well, what that does is that causes a low pressure area in this area right up here. Okay. Because the air is coming through here and it's creating a suction up here. Right. This tube that you see going out the bottom of the alternator, if you look up under here. I see it. You can see the tube up under here. See it? Right there. I'm shining my light on it. Oh, I see it. Uh -huh. Okay. I do. What we do is because it's a low pressure area up in there, uh -huh. that sucks air in the back of the alternator and out that tube to cool the alternator. Oh, uh-huh. And what you want to do is look up in that tube every so often when you get this panel up. If you see any oil or moisture in that tube, like shiny, uh -huh. it indicates the front seal on the alternator is leaking and it's allowing and oil's oil coming to in. go into okay. it and out the drain. But Throughout you don't see any oil. I saw it. It looks white. It's fine. It looks real good. No problem. But that's something you can keep an eye on as an owner. Okay. And if you start to see all there, the mm -hmm. alternator needs to come on. Why they pack these TCs in here? Yeah, yeah, they pack them in there tight. The battery box, I didn't see anything on the bottom of it, any problems there. I didn't either. So, he's got some oil leaks on the rocker covers and the, yeah, the yeah. push rod housings on the head side. Yeah. I, I wrote them down. Okay. Is this an exhaust leak here? Uh, it might be a little one. Coming out of this slip joint right here. Uh -huh, uh -huh. It's not bad. Okay. It's not bad at all. The slip joint heats up as it gets hot and it'll seal itself up. But that's uh -huh. not unusual on these type of slip joints. Okay. Because the, the only one that uses this type of slip joints is this engine. Okay. You know, the UB engine. Yeah. Isn't this the UB? Yes. Yeah, I think so. 
one yeah, it's uses. a UB. But, and that's the only type, only one it uses, the slip joint with the extra flange on the end. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Most of them are just a solid slip joint uh -huh. and they seal up a little better. But this extra flange allows it to move a little bit. You'll see a little bit of blow by. Okay. okay your battery cooling duct here is about collapsed. See it? Uh huh. Okay, looks pretty good. Let's get it on jacks. Yep. Ready jack, Kevin. So this is for us, huh? Yes. We may have to go through it again. We'll need to go ask him for another sheet. Yeah, well, let's go, go ask him for another sheet. Are you the Continental? Yes, oh. sir, I am. Patrick Pierce. Nice to meet you. So I'm new to this plane, and um, any helpful... The engine, the engine looks pretty good. Your, your, your cylinder compressions are even all the way across the board. Uh -huh. 62s. Okay, and it's great. Be on the number six. I didn't see any burn valves or piston Good. problems or anything like that. So. Super. It's got relatively new cylinders, the 300 hours on the cylinders. I see they're, they're millenniums, yeah. And they're millenniums and they've got the gammy, although we haven't done the fine tuning for, you know, Lena Peak. Right, right. Uh, you need to get that fuel system adjusted because if it's too lean and you operate Lena Peak, then you can get overly lean. Mm hmm. And that can cause you some problems. Okay. We haven't been running Lena Peak yet, okay, but, good, good. but uh, Just best we'd like to. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, I, I, I keep Peak. reading that it's actually better for the engine. It, it, is, the lower power settings yeah. is okay, but uh -huh. you don't watch out do for the high power. Out and stuff no, like we that. full rich anytime we're climbing. Yep. Hey, Chris, you want to help me get this up? Question so far? Um, where do you work out of? I'm out of Atlanta area. Atlanta. Yeah. Okay. I have a shop in Atlanta area that we work on Barrens and Bonanzas. Uh -huh. and this lived for its first four years in Florida. Okay. And was serviced at the um, banana at, at um, where was it in, in Kansas, I believe. Oh, at Wichita. At Wichita. At the factory. At the factory. And then it came out here. Okay. Who's doing it now? Um, Mike up at Aero Resources in Columbia. Okay, I'm not sure. I've never heard of that. He's not a Bonanza guy, and that's a big part of the I reason I've seen I've, a lot yet. Yeah, this is where we find most he, of the problems. He's a, with guys that are not he's a, Bonanza I, guys. I, I find him to be an extremely good mechanic, but I don't think he's, you know, Bonanza specific. He doesn't know all the foibles of. Well, that's the, what you're here for. That's what I'm here for. Um. I thought the, the struts were low. On they the are mains. very low. Okay. I'll tell you one way you can tell if you go and look at the door. Mm -hmm. if the bottom edge of the door should be somewhere in that pin. Oh, I see. Uh huh. That's a good reference for you to look at. Okay. The front strut about the width of your hand, right here. Okay. Four fingers. Four, Four fingers. fingers. Exactly. Four fingers. Between what? Between the, the chrome. This between. This part and this part. If you can oh, okay. Put your fingers right there. That's about. That's a I, good. I think that one's okay, but the mains. The mains are low. The mains were low. Yeah. 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 <laughs> our, our students had a mark on the checklist, and so they put the checklist down there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Did she give you a sticker? I got another one. Okay. I'm gonna give you some tensions. You can just write them on there. Okay. okay.
58. You're three pounds above the minimum. <laughs> Fifty-six. That's a good one. Right in the middle. Hey Joe. Yeah. You wanna grab me a little cotter pin? Yeah. I'm just repositioning the sleeve here. This mm -hmm. one's so old and rusty, I'm just gonna change. You should be able to see three eighths inch of the end of that cable and every single pre flight that cable should be inspected for fraying. Okay, if I see it. If that cable is frayed, you uh -huh. don't go, or if you have to get home, you leave the gear down. Okay. Okay? This is the up lock roller right here on the back side. Uh huh. We never put grease fitting caps on that roller because it will hit this cable when we go in the up position. You'll uh -huh. see that in just okay. a minute. Make sure this roller is free. Make sure you can see 3 8 inch of the end of the cable. And, and no sure fray. The not no. Okay. okay. Everything else up in here looks pretty good. Brake hoses look pretty good. They're a little old. Yeah, these were manufactured in 1989. Uh -huh. They should be replaced every 10 years, and these are very old. So very old. Uh -huh. The upper brake hose is the same way. Let me see what the date on it is. It looks like it's been replaced. Uh, let me see if I can read a date on it. Uh, Alright, it was done in 90. It's still old. It's still old. It was done in 1990. Both hoses, mm -hmm. all four brake hoses are to replace. Upper and lower on both sides. You got that? Okay. Let's go look at the other side and get attention. You said that the 53, was it 53 here? 50, uh, I what, I, what Six? did I say for the nose 56 gear? And uh, 58, 58. 58. 55 is the minimum down lock tension on the nose gear. Uh -huh. You got it right over here. Okay. 45 to 65 is the mains. Um, that could be a couple of issues. It could be normal tension, if everything is set up right, will be somewhere 65 to 70. Uh -huh. okay. uh, it could be the up tension may be too tight. The spring may be getting worn and need to be replaced. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and the rod ends on the nose gear, once we get under here and look at those, we'll tell you more. Okay. If they've still got grease fittings in them, uh -huh. they need to be taken out and put the solid ones in because those are causing problems in braking. Oh, okay. Okay. Fifty-seven. Cable looks good, no problem there. Roller feels good, springs look good up here. Everything looks good in here. Okay. Outboard door can use a little lube on these outboard bearings. The other one the same way. Nobody ever lubes these because they don't see them. But when you're doing your lube, just uh -huh. this will be hooked up. Normally, just spray them. Get those with the LPS yes, too. Yes, sir. Okay. Let's take a look at the nose gear, see if we see any issues there. These are the rod ends for the nose gear. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, got it, They're see them? Very loose, very loose. Huh? Left and right nose door rod ends need to be replaced. So which part is that? These little rod ends right okay. here, uh -huh. top and bottom need to be replaced. They're both moving. Okay. They're loose, huh? Yes, sir. Worn. You, you may be able to tighten them up. Uh huh. They're ball and socket joints is what they are, and yeah. you may be able to tighten them up, but sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. Okay. I would try that first. Okay. Try to tighten. Okay. Everything else, the boot, boots look okay. Yeah. Everything else looks pretty good up in here. Okay. I just say left and right nose door loose. No, uh, the yeah, put the, door, the, the doors are loose. Yeah, they're loose, but they're loose for a reason. The the rod ends 
um, are just worn. Are worn. Yeah, it's a ball and socket joint, and they have a you can tighten up the socket onto the ball, but it, it, it can only go a half a turn at a time. And if a half a turn is not enough, then mm -hmm. you just got to replace it. Okay. Just get worn. They can go half a turn because it's got that cotter pin for Correct. it. Correct. Right. Okay. Okay. Alright, we have your gear safety switch is disconnected. That's the arms okay. that are coming down the gear. Okay. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put the gear handle in the up position and we're gonna okay. turn the power on. Okay. We should get a horn and the gear should not move. I'm gonna go pull that switch down and put it in the air. And then it should that switch should protect it. Okay. Then I'm gonna go over and pull that switch down and put it in the air, and this switch should protect it. Okay. All right, so Alan, unstow the handle and turn the counterclockwise for me, please. Unstow the handle? Manual hand Oh, okay. Almost a half. Almost a half. What year is this airplane? 91. Okay, white box, so we're in good shape. We're unstowing the manual hand crank, mm -hmm. and on this vintage airplane, 91 model, we should have approximately a half to three quarter, five eighths, somewhere mm -hmm. along in there, mm -hmm. of travel still left in the handle mm -hmm. before it hits the mechanical stops. Okay. We never want to hit mechanical stops. We always want to stop electrically. Right. We're going to do the same thing in the up position in just a minute. We should still have approximately a half, half a turn. turn. Okay. Because we always want to stop electrically so we don't damage something on the inside. Understood. Okay. All right, uh, gear handle up, please. Battery switch on. Off. On. Off. Go to the other so side. So that, that did the right thing. Kept well, it from... That switch protected it. Right. Now we're going to pull this one down and see if that switch protects it. On. Off. Hey, you hook them back up, Jeff. All right, crank the doors open. We're going to crank the doors open a little bit, Jeff. Both switches are working as advertised. Good. You got the horn and the gear didn't move. That's those. You know what those switches are called? The DA switches. Uh, dumbass. Uh -huh. Dumbass. <laughs> You're a dumbass for putting the handle up. <laughs> On the ground. Hey, I ran into that before. <laughs> <laughs> Check ride looks good, nice and free booping on the plunger. This is the only thing I don't like here. They put metal tape over these holes. Oh, uh-huh. It should be dope and fabric. Oh. And what that's for is that allows the inside of that door to breathe. Breathe. Uh -huh. you, because if you put the metal tape over the then holes, then you get corrosion happens, inside, huh? It creates condensation inside mm -hmm. the door, and all of a sudden you're gonna see a hole on the outside of the bottom where it corroded right through. Uh-huh. Is there a Tyvek tape or some such that can dope be put? Fabric. Dope and fabric. Dope and fabric. Okay. Dope and fabric. Just like a dope and fabric airplane. Uh -huh. We okay. just we keep we keep a template for three and a half, four and mm -hmm. a half circles. Mm -hmm. We just cut a circle with a pink and shears. You glue it on. You put you let it you heat shrink. You let it mm -hmm. dry. You take a heat gun. It shrinks it tight. You put some dope on it. You're finished. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then it can breathe. Mm -hmm. Thing over here. Now, is that something that was done by the factory, or no. or that was they a maintenance? Put Somebody else did that. Uh -huh. Evidently, these doors were painted at one time. They were. Okay. Uh huh. That's where that happened. At. Nice and free. Rod rotates. Everything looks good here. All set, Jeff. All right, Alan, gear handle back down. I'm gonna give you some power, here it comes. Okay, not over, right? All the way down. All the way up, please. Clear up. Okay, why won't, why won't the gear move? Um, don't know. The dumbass switch? No. No? It's a safety system designed into the airplane. Okay. Oh. Nope. Airspeed. 
Throttle position. Throttle position. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Push the throttle in. I'm not picking on you here. I'm just trying to no, teach that, you a little thanks. bit about Yeah, I love that. Okay. Push the throttle all the way in. Okay, we're climbing. Uh -huh. The gear's up. The throttle's wide open. We're climbing like mad. Why is the horn still going off? Because the door is not shut. It has nothing to do with it. That's mechanical. Um, this is a configuration warning, uh -huh. not a safety warning. This is like a big airplane would have. Okay, so the flaps are down? Is that Correct. Okay. We are climbing and we have the flaps. The logic board in this mm -hmm. in airplane says anything other than full down will silence the horn. Mm -hmm. Let's yep. put the flaps to approach, please. They'll go off. There you go. Mm -hmm. But it is the same horn you hear for the throttle mm -hmm. and for the gear warning. Mm -hmm. So you have to understand your flight regime at that point in time to know what the horn is telling you. Okay. Okay? So don't be alarmed by horn. It's not you're unsafe. It's just you still got the you flaps did down. did something wrong. Right. Correct. Okay. It's a configuration warning. Okay? okay? All right. Let me get my scale here and we'll check the up my phone. Clockwise. We're checking the travel on the manual hand crank now to see if we have our half a turn. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're right at a half. You're good on both ends. Great. If you come around the back, okay. come all the way around the back, I'll show you the uplock rollers. There's the uplock roller you check on pre-flight. I see it. Okay, and the uplock is up against it because the uplock cable right there where that sleeve is yep. has pulled it into place. I see that. Uh -huh. Okay, what we want to see is we want to see between 10 and 20 thousandths clearance between the uplock and the roller. That's a 10 thousandths feeler gauge. It goes it in there okay. Perfect. Uh huh. And the 20 thousandths. There's no. I have to force it, but it's go. If you ever adjust it. Uh -huh. Tell your mechanics, lean towards 20. Lean towards 20, okay. Keep it closer to 20 than 10. It gives you a little bit better clearance and it mm -hmm. seems to work better. Okay. Okay, we're gonna check the door fit. One is great. Okay, let's go on the other side and take a look at it. Ten goes good. I can force a twenty, so it's good. All right, that's where I took the grease fitting cap off of. I see that. Uh -huh. See how close it is it to that? It's really close. Deal? Yep. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. That's why you don't put them on there. Okay. okay. Got it. Door fit looks good. If these bolts are ever removed right here, uh -huh. make sure the heads are to the middle, or it will hit the strut right here. Got it. Okay. Heads to the middle. To the nose. You're going to be an A and B when you're done. <laughs> this is great. I know. <laughs> okay, crank it down on the tape stop. Good. All right, this is the nose gear retract rod. Okay. This is the bottom of the gearbox. Everything on the main gear is done from the top of the gearbox. Okay. This is the bottom of the gearbox, and this is the nose gear actuator arm that goes up to this rod that uh -huh. runs up the right side of the nose tunnel and retracts the nose gear. Uh huh. This bolt must be tight at all times. Okay, I can turn that bolt right now. But think about this, that nose gear's hanging uh -huh. out of the bottom and it's pulling on this rod, isn't it? Uh huh. I'm gonna take my foot, and I'm gonna take the weight off. Watch the weight come off, see it? Yeah. Now look how loose it is. Yep. Not good. This is dangerous. Oh, that's dangerous. Okay. Because of the fact that what will happen is it will work back and forth in this arm and it'll either break the bolt off or it'll twist the arm. Okay. That by pushing be, it, by, yes, by doing cycling. Yes, okay. And that needs to be tightened. And you might want to get them to do it here while we're here. Okay. Okay. It's not a big deal. Jeff can do it in a few minutes. He's already done two or three. I'm having shit. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I would have that done right now. Okay. Okay. Jeff, you can do that. And can you inflate the struts too, whatever that costs? Yeah. Okay, Alan, crank gear down until I tell you some more, Alan. <laughs> crank down until I tell you to stop. 
This is the one, this airplane has the link on the retract arm, you know, with the two yes. bolts that come loose all the time. That's good right there. And if you put it in this position, you can check the two bolts. You know what I'm talking about right here? I think so. I just want to make sure. Right here? Oh, yeah. yeah. These two bolts yeah. have a tendency to work loose all the time. Which one? That's that this one? On this bolt. Check them. Pull my light up in there, and I'll, I have to have two hands here. He's Where's got it. These two bolts, because this is oh, a bracket I see right here, uh -huh. this hooks the gear. This is the nose gear retract. Okay. It hooks the gear to the arm. They have a tendency to work loose. They look tight, though. Well, if you move it like this, you can feel it move between the two of them if you put your oh, hand on it. Okay. These are fine. Okay. But that's something your mechanic needs to watch because they, if they start moving, uh -huh. what it'll do is it'll just wear that whole bracket right out. Yeah. Okay. All right, come all the way down, Alan. Yeah, what do you call those two bolts? That's the nose gear retract bracket. Those were loose or not No, loose? yours were fine. We're, we're fine. You're both good. Okay. All right, we're going to take a look at the steering here while they're hooking up the uh, doors. Okay. Let me get my old punch and I'll open it up for you. And it was the main bolt that was loose. That was the nose retract bolt on the back was loose and he's mm -hmm. gonna take care of that when we get done here. Okay. I'm just opening your shimmy damper so I can put a depth gauge in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It looks okay, no problem. Let's see if we got any other steering issues. All right, we got some clay right here. This is the aft steering rod, and there's a fork on the end of it right there. I see you it. See the uh -huh. fork? Yep. Mm -hmm. Watch the movement. I see it. See the movement back like and forth? A, the, quite a bit. Like there's a two bushings in there, uh -huh. and their bushings are worn. Okay. That's aft steering rod, front fork, bushings worn. Front fork. Bushings worn, yes, sir. This is what we call the yoke bushing. This attaches the steering linkage to the strut to steer the airplane. If you'll mm -hmm. notice as I move it here, see how the whole thing's hooked together? Yeah. There's a bushing right in here called the yoke bushing. I got and it. And if I you'll see, watch this how, right here, it'll pivot. I see how it moves, uh-huh. There's a bushing in there that needs to be replaced too. See how much play we got in that? Yeah. Okay, let's check the front. That's the yoke bushing is worn, Y-O-K-E. So th these are all things that are okay at annual, which is a couple months away. Yes, sir. That is not. Right, that back he'll do that. Here. Okay. This cone right here, this is your left hand steering stop. Uh huh. This must rotate at all times. Uh -huh. So when it hits the steering stop, it can roll off of it. Okay. So if you put your finger up in there, I should be able to turn it and I cannot. It's too tight. But that bolt right there, this you should, should be able turn? to rotate. Yes, sir. It should be able okay. to rotate. Okay. See the yoke right here? We're looking at it from yeah, the other direction. Yeah, yeah. When they take the bolt out to take the yoke off to replace the bushing, uh -huh. Make sure when they put it back in, they don't tighten it too tight. Tighten. That should okay. rotate. Okay. So that it hits a different place well, every time? Well, look or? right here. This is the left-hand steering stop. This yeah. bolt. Yeah. All right, I'm going to turn it here. Get, I see. I, I see how it, it would come it up against it. It that bolt. See? It? Right. I don't want to do this on jack because we're wiggling. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But it turns all the way around there. And what it does when it hits that bolt, that bolt has a convex head. Mm -hmm. And it makes that cam turn. So it has something to roll Understood. off of. Understood, just you like a lifter. It. Exactly, okay. same type setup. Okay. And we wanna make sure that is rotate. But they have to take that out to replace the yoke bushing. Anyways. And they should replace it. Now, when you get home, if your mechanic's available, you can have him just take the bolt, take the nut off, unloosen mm -hmm. it one hole, and mm -hmm. put a cotter pin back in it. Simple to fix, and then fix the yoke bushing in annual. Perfect, okay. Okay, we're good on the door. Okay, thank you. I just say your pushing fix. Uh, yeah. Replace. Yeah, replace. All right, power's coming on, Alan. Final play. Clear, Pat. I'm good. Okay. Okay, we put the doors back up. We're going to do a final check. 
fit looks real nice there. It looks pretty good on the nose gear doors. That's not bad at all. You're not going to get it much better than that. No? Okay. No. Looks good here. Looks good there. Uh -huh. yep, sure does. Yes, sir. On the bear and the doors, the ones we were flying, they all had quite a very difficult to touch properly. More than likely, what's happening is you have linkage worn on the inside. On inboard doors on a Baron and a Bonanza, there's four points to move that one door. You have the, the outboard hinge point where there's a bearing, then you go to an idler where there's another bearing and a spacer, then you go to an, on the top of the idler where the idler itself is, then you go to another rod that goes to the top of the actuator. Wow. And if you get a little bit in each point, it'll do exactly what you're yeah, causing then you, right there. You, you fly 180 knots, you know. Right. right. Exactly. You have, to, you have to go and crank it in the back and it if it stops at a quarter of a turn yeah. where it's supposed to, the door should not be hanging open. It should not. But you must rig the airplane with 28 volts on it, not the battery. If you rig the gear system with the battery, it will never, ever be, be right. right. Because what is the alternator doing? Mm -hmm. 28 20. volts, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You have to simulate the same voltage. All right, all the way down, please, Alan. Yep. Clear down. That's interesting. <laughs> Use 28 volt extension for gear mm -hmm. up and down, not battery power. Right. Prop heat's good. All right, we're good to go. Bring the flaps up the rest of the way. They're all up. Oh, you brought them. I didn't know that. Okay. I didn't hear you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, let's yeah, do bring, that. Bring it up full and then break it down, I'll tell you that. Yeah. Yeah? All right, any questions? Um, so far? No? We're done. Um, so I, I guess then, uh, um, there was something I read recently about a fuel line next to a turbocharger. Okay. Um, is that, is there... I, 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 I don't see anything. It's like everything is great. good and clear. And okay. Everything's away from the engine mounts. And, good. And good okay. One thing there. I will warn you about on this engine is make sure your mechanic watches the clamp uh -huh. for the tailpipe to the turbocharger. The V band clamp. It's a V band clamp. Mm -hmm. They're not indestructible and they do wear out. Mm -hmm. And if he takes it off, it should be taken off every so often and mm -hmm. look at it every, mm -hmm. you know, three or four hundred hours. Mm -hmm. And if it starts to see the V separating and he has to keep tightening it up, tightening it up, tightening it up, replace it. Because it's it. got a crack in the middle of the V well, or what? What happens is it goes over two tapered flanges uh -huh. like this segments. Okay. And it'll just literally open itself up and you have to keep uh, tightening it more okay. and more okay. and more. And it, they, get, uh -huh. they wear themselves out. And is there they, anything I can do on pre flight that. No. When when he's putting it back on too, he needs to tap its circumference. Right. Circumference uh -huh. Okay. To center it as he's tightening it down, Correct. and then torque it to the mm -hmm. proper torque. Okay. And then if if you replace it, then go back in in about 50 hours. Check Redo the it. Torque Redo again. it. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. If it moves, go back in at 50 more and check it again. It uh -huh. should not move after that 50 hours. Okay. Okay. So then the big dings were that. Um, he's the, taking care of that right which now. Which he's taking care of. The prop is 180 degrees out, yes, sir. and the struts were low. Minor issues. Minor issues. Okay. okay. Minor issues. Um, anything else you can? Oh, nice I, I do have another question. Okay. If you look um, on this side, but more on the other side, the um, between the wing and the spar, I guess it's kind of wrinkly in there. Is is that a just a normal build issue, or is it a was it repaired <laughs> and it's not on the logs? Because there's nothing on the logs of a gear up, but um... Oh, you mean right up here? See this? Yeah. 
that's not uncommon. You yeah. got a little bit back here and a little bit here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just a lot of that where they rivet it up in there and they pull the skin up. That's what I was told. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay. It's, that's not a big deal. Okay. Great. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Um, oh, and there was another issue of um, I recently had to re replace this okay. snapped off okay. um, and getting the right um, adjustment for that closing correctly and this also being easy to yes, sir. move was hard and we, yes, we haven't really is. gotten okay. there. Is there? There's no trick to it. It's just one of those things you got to play with. You just keep playing with uh, it. Okay. And what you want to do is you want to have it so when the latch grabs it, you uh -huh. should still have about probably an eighth to a quarter of an inch. Uh -huh. So as you close this over, you see it pull down. I do see that. So here okay. can we... We'll, che we'll check it when they okay. get the plugs back okay. in, okay? okay? Let them close the engine all up and everything else. Once we get, get that fixed, they'll put it back on the ground and close the engine up. Okay. But if you see it that way and you watch it and pull down, and what I would highly suggest is put a witness mark. Uh huh. Okay. Which is you can take a little piece of. Oh, just to, to tell you it's actually off, where take it's supposed tape to be. And tape off a little spot here uh -huh. across both of them about this long mm -hmm. and put a black mm -hmm. mark. Mm -hmm. You can do it with a sharpie. Yeah. You know, Got it. I do both sides. Great that idea. Way you know the, I love it. You know the cowling is closed. Do the same thing right here. I love it. Okay. I will do that. I highly recommend that with Hartwell latches because uh -huh. you can tell a latch is starting to fail when the springs are going bad in here or this is starting to stretch uh -huh. because the witness marks don't line up anymore. Uh huh. Engine temperatures. Um, climbing out of Truckee last TIT weekend. CHT or? Uh, CHT? No, uh, so, C CHT. Okay. I was seeing 410 before I was able to pull back on power. Too hot. Um, Lower the nose. Keep the nose down. Okay. I, I, You've got a bunch of baffle issues. Yeah, uh -huh. I've got if a bunch. If you get the baffle issues straightened out, okay. which cylinder was at 410? Almost all of them. Okay. You got baffle issues? Yeah. Uh, has your fuel system been set up recently? No, not that I know okay. of. On takeoff roll, I see what kind 41. Of, okay, what's your red line? Red line. What's the red line on the fuel flow? 35. Okay, and you're hitting 41 on that? I believe so. Okay, you're way above it, which is fine. I'd rather okay. see you there than down mm -hmm. below it. Yeah. Um, yeah, but you're probably losing power here then, huh? Yeah, a little bit. You know, it, you know you can, I would set the fuel system up by the book. Okay. Service bullet 97.3E. Yeah. Talks exactly how to do it. Okay. It's continental service bullet. Have mm -hmm. your shop set it up and make sure it's right. And then you need to fix some of the baffle issues. Okay. And that will help you a lot if you'll fix that. Okay. And then on a hot day, you may just have to lower the nose a little bit. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Well, that's what I've been doing. Okay, that good. seems to keep her down around. Yeah, this engine is, uh, it, it likes to this airplane but it has a tendency to try to overheat on you a little bit. Uh-huh. Once you get it up to altitude, it loves it. <laughs> yeah. You know, it likes it up there. Uh-huh. But uh, climbing out, it's, it's a little, they, they have a tendency to try to overheat because they're working pretty hard. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's go take care of your paperwork over here. So, you remember that? What's that? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Got it. That's a Continental Service Bulletin number? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Great.